What you see on the screen now is a copy of a, one of the class handouts, which you can also find on the web, and the resolution will be better on the web. What the previous lessons have done is to to teach you number uh, actually let me show it in a different way teach you graph number one two three five so we did in one lesson and then four and six in another lesson to summarize graph number one is the total product of water curve for a type 1 cross-section of the production function. To get from 1 to 2, you'll recall we rotated around a 45 degree line. To get from 2 to 3, we shrunk or expanded by the price of water, which didn't change the shape. To get from 3 to 5, we added fixed cost, which just means taking graph number 3 and moving it up by the amount of the fixed cost. We went the three to from 3 to 4 just by getting average and marginal, and we went from 5 to 6 just by getting average and marginal. The labeling here is a little bit different because here I added the phrase, or the, the letters here, short run, which I didn't bother to put before. But all of this is talking about the short run, because we have a fixed cost. This is water holding fertilizer fixed, so of course we are dealing with the short run. The first new thing to learn is the relationship between the short run in graph 4 and the short run. I mean the marginal in graph 4 and the marginal in graph 6. Look at 3 and 5. Three is this. Five is this. They have exactly the same shape, or at least they're supposed to have exactly the same shape. It's just that in graph number five, it's lifted up by the amount of the fixed costs. So two curves have exactly the same shape. Their marginals are going to be exactly the same. And if the marginals are exactly the same, if the, the the marginals are the same, then act, then if the tangent lines are the same, then the marginals are the same. It's going to have the same anything that has the same exactly the same shape, regardless of the difference in position, is going to have the same marginal. You can see that perhaps a bit more clearly in graph number seven. In graph number seven, we've just superimposed graphs three and five, so we have short run total cost and short run variable cost. And suppose we take one particular Q value and then another Q value and draw tangent lines. Well, the tangent line to these, the tangent lines are parallel. And here and here. Tangent lines are also parallel. So for any given value of Q, let's say this one or this one, the marginal of the total cost is the same as the marginal of the variable cost. So short run marginal total cost equals short run marginal variable cost. And therefore, we just call this usually short run marginal cost. And we don't distinguish between the short run marginal of the total cost and the short run marginal of the variable cost because the, they're the same. Now, I've discussed this graphically. If you happen to know calculus, there's an easy way of, alternative way of doing this. Short run total cost is a function of Q. It equals short run fixed cost, which is not a function of Q because it's just fixed, and short run variable cost, which is a function of Q. 
If you know calculus, you'll understand the next 20 seconds. Take the derivative of both sides of this equation. You have short run marginal total cost of Q equals the derivative of a constant is 0. Short run fixed cost is a constant, so its derivative is 0 plus short run marginal variable cost of Q, which proves exactly what I claimed over here, that the short run marginal total cost equals the short run marginal variable cost. Therefore, in graph 4 and graph 6, the marginal, in graph 4, it's the marginal variable cost. In graph 6, it's the marginal total cost. Those are the same curves. In other words, in other words, this curve and this curve are exactly the same. And you can see that I've drawn short run marginal variable cost equals short run marginal cost. In graph 4 and in graph 6, short run marginal total cost equals short run marginal cost, because they're the same curve. Graph number 8, you can think of it as two ways. You either get it from graph 7, or you get it by superimposing graph 4 and graph 6. Graph number 8 only has one marginal cost curve, because there is only one marginal cost curve. The marginal for the total and the marginal for the variable are the same. Now, I think it's probably otherwise easier to understand graph number 8 as a superimposition of 4 into 6. Short run average variable cost in 4 and in 8 look, it's rather easy to see how the short run average variable cost in 8 comes from in 4. And in, um, in for the marginal cost, if you, if you start out with graph 4, Basically, graph 8 is graph 4, just with short run average total cost added into it. Short run average total cost, as we saw before, was U-shaped. So, so probably the easiest way to get 8 is just superimposing 4 and 6. You know that, um, well, there are going to be two things. Short and average total cost in graph number 8 is U-shaped. Now, remember what we said before that if marginal is below average, then average is falling. And if marginal is above average, then average is rising. And you can see that I've obeyed that law here. In the beginning, marginal is below average, and so average is falling. Then at the end, marginal is above average, so average is rising. What this means is that if you have an average that's U-shaped, then at the bottom or top of the U, whichever it is. I mean, the U might look might look like this. Oops. Might look like that. But here we're dealing with uh, with bottoms. At the bottom of the U, marginal is going to have to equal average because average is neither rising nor falling. So marginal is going to have to equal average here. So the marginal is going to have to go through that point. And in graph number 8, that's exactly what happens. That at the bottom of the U, the marginal is equal to the average. There's one other thing to see from graph number 8. Let's start with, with this equation again. Divide both sides of that equation by Q. If you do that, you get short run total cost divided by Q equals short run fixed cost divided by Q plus short run variable cost divided by Q. The left hand side by definition is short run average total cost. Let me leave the first term on the right hand side the same. 
uh, sorry, the, the, this term should be SRFC. This is SRFC, fixed cost divided by Q. And the second term is, by definition, short run average variable cost. So the difference between short run average total cost and short run average variable cost is this. Let's think about how this term behaves. Okay, this term, which is short run average fixed cost, but that's not a particularly commonly used term. It's short run fixed cost divided by Q. Now I claim that in the limit, first off, that's a, that's a positive number. And so short run average total cost is bigger than short run average variable cost. Okay, Total cost is bigger than variable cost. Look at graph 8. Total cost is bigger than variable cost. Right? SRATC is always bigger than SRAVC. Okay, so, so average total cost is always bigger than average variable cost. But let's look at the limit of SRFC over Q as Q goes to infinity. I'm sorry, this is, I keep on writing T, it's SRFC. So short run fixed cost divided by Q. Short run fixed cost is a constant. Q is going to infinity. As the denominator goes to infinity, the whole thing goes to zero. So what that's showing you is that the difference between short run average total cost and short run average variable cost is this thing which is positive but goes to infinity, it uh, goes to zero as Q goes to infinity. Now let's do the graph. The difference between short run average total cost and short run average variable cost is this gap. Short run average total cost, short run average variable cost. That gap is number one, positive, because we said that here. And number two, as Q goes to infinity, that gap goes to zero. And that's what you see, that as you go in graph number eight to the right, that gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller. All right. So this is the, the way that we get all the details of these short run cost curves. Remember that we have only here been been working with type one. We have to do this now all over again for type two.